All right, we're looking here at uh, using tables to find uh, different values in terms of your uh, derivatives using uh, various rules that we might have. So first, I want to look at just uh, if we have h, p, and q being defined as they are here, uh, h being f of g of x, p being the product of f times g, quotient being the uh, quotient of f divided by g, uh, we can use a table just to find those various values. So h of 2 means f of g of 2. Well, we work from the inside out. g of 2, when you look at this chart, g of 2 is going to be uh, right here. g of 2 is 5. So that means I want to do f of 5, and f of 5, when I look at f of 5, gives me a value of 4. So there's how you can use your table just to find various values. Products and quotients are very easy. Product means we're doing f of 4 times g of 4. Well, that's really straightforward because f of 4, we just said, uh, is 5. And uh, we know that g of 4 is equal to 2. So 5 times 2 gives you 10. The quotient here, same idea, we can do uh, f of 7 divided by g of 7, because that's how they have it defined as what the quotient is. So f of 7 divided by g of 7, uh, f of 7 is 2, g of 7 is 4, so 2 over 4, or 1 half, 1 over 2. So that's some of the easy stuff. Now, to try to get it into these ideas using product, quotient, and chain rule. So let's do product rule here first, p prime of 5. P is F times G. So that means that we need to be using the product rule based on this F times G. Well, the derivative of that would be the first times, so F of X times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And that's cool. And now we can use this because we have 5 being the place you want to evaluate. So we're just going to have to go and plug in all these values. So f of 5, as we go to our table, f of 5 becomes 4. g prime of 5 becomes negative 1. So 4 times negative 1. And then we do g of 5, which is 7. And f prime of 5, which is positive 1. So we get 4 times negative 1, which is negative 4, plus 7 times 1, which is 7. Negative 4 plus 7 gives you a positive 3. When we do quotient rule down beneath it, uh, so that derivative is low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So the bottom being g of x, and we're squaring it. So now, again, we have a place we want to specifically evaluate. We can plug in 7 using the table for all of those values. So if I go one at a time, g of 7 is 4, f prime of 7 becomes negative 3, minus f of 7 is 2, g prime of 7 is 6, all over low squared. So g of 7, we said was 4, and we're squaring that. So if I simplify, I get negative 12 and negative 12 again, so negative 24 on top over 16, and that could simplify to negative 3 over uh, 2 for your fraction. Now, the only tough one here is, and I say that tough very generously, is uh, with, with this chain, uh, chain rule. H of x is a inside and outside function. So it's derivative of the outside, with respect to the inside, means keep the inside the same, times derivative of the inside. So again, we need to go, because we are evaluating at a point, I can call it now at 2 for each one of those. So f prime of h of 2. Well, what is h of 2? h of 2, hang on, <laughs> h is not the inside function, I apologize. g is the inside function, that might make it easier. What is g of 2? g of 2 is 5. So really, I'm doing f prime of 5 times g prime of 2. f prime of 5 is 1, and g prime of 2 is negative 2. So 1 times negative 2, which is negative 2 for my answer. 
just like that. Now, this one here on the right is just a little bit different because we're going in the opposite order now. Uh, instead of like h being f of g of x, they're going the other way around, g of f of x. Well, it's the same idea. So it's derivative of the outside, keeping the inside the same, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of f of 7, we can find f of 7 on our chart here. f of 7 is 2 times f prime of 7. So with that value, we get uh, g prime of 2 is negative 2 again. And f prime of 7 is negative 3. So we get a positive 6 as our answer to that derivative. All right, there's a product of the quotient rule left. I'm going to advise you to uh, pause the video real quick, see if you can solve these last two problems uh, using the same patterns that we did for the ones on the left. All right, let's see how you did. So P prime, again, should be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. 1d2 plus 2d1. So now using the table, f of 2 is 7, g prime of 2 uh, is negative 2, g of 2 is 5, and f prime of 2 is 8, so we get negative 14 plus 40, so I should get uh, 26 as my answer on that problem. And for this quotient rule 1, uh, started from the bottom, so low, the function on the bottom is g, so low times d high minus high times d low all over low squared. And so make sure you're paying attention to what your high and low functions are. And then we can just read it straight off. Uh, g of 4 uh, in my table right here, g of 4 becomes 2. f prime of 4 in that same row is 3, minus high d low. So f of 4 is 5, g prime of 4 over here is 6, all over low squared, so g of 4 was 2, so 2 squared for your denominator. So as my marker tries to die here, 6 minus 30 uh, becomes negative 24, divided by 4, so this is negative 6 as my answer. So there you have it, using tables and using all three derivative uh, styles, product, quotient, and chain rule, uh, to find your values.